and said unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye enter into it, ye shall find a cold tide whereon uh, never man sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and found the cold tide by the door uh, without in a place where two ways met. And they loose him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye loosing the cold? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded. And they let them go. And they brought the cold to Jesus and uh, cast their garments on him. And he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches of the trees, and strawed them in the way. And they that went before, and they that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David, that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus entered uh, into Jerusalem, and into the temple. And when he had looked round about uh, upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, uh, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily, or if perhaps he might find anything thereon. And when he uh, came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves, and would not suffer or permit that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? But ye have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and uh, chief priests heard it, and saw how they might uh, destroy him. For they feared him, because all the people were was astonished at his doctrine, or at his teaching. And when even was come, he went out of the city, and in the morning, as they passed by, he saw the fig tree, or they saw the fig tree, dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold the fig tree, which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily or truly I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. When ye stand praying, forgive if ye have ought or anything against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. And they come again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, there came to, uh, come to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders, and say unto him, By what authority 
doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you one question, and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then did ye not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people. For all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto, him, unto Jesus, We cannot tell. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Mark chapter 12, when he began, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set in a hedge about it, and digged a place for the wine fat, and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. And at the season he sent to the husbandmen a servant, that he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. And again he sent unto them another servant, and at him they cast stones and wounded him in the head, and sent him away shamefully handled. And again he sent another, and they, him they killed, and many others, beating some and killing some. Having yet therefore one son, his real beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him and killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen, and will give the vineyard unto others. And have you not read this scripture, the stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing and it is marvellous in our eyes. You see, he's talking about himself here. He said, the stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. The Lord Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. Praise the Lord. For the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to understand we have a need of salvation. We have to have forgiveness for our sins. Without that forgiveness, we're heading down to hell, my friend. And God does not want that for you. He wants you to be in heaven. How can you be in heaven? Only through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be in heaven. You've got to come in repentance toward God. That is, a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. This can be yours this afternoon. You can be saved by the grace of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't leave earth without Jesus Christ, because if you do, you'll be in hell. And as I said, God does not want that for you, my friend. He's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Acknowledge before God that you are a sinner, and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Is your soul saved? As you listen to this message this afternoon, if you were to die right now, where would you be? Would you be in heaven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, or would you be down in hell because you've rejected or neglected, the Lord Jesus Christ who this afternoon can be your saviour. You see, the Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other. But there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You must be saved if you ever want to enter into heaven. We won't be in heaven apart from faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you called upon the name of the Lord for your eternal salvation? There's only salvation found in Jesus.
Jesus Christ, my friend. Come to the one who said, I am the way, not a way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Have you come in repentance toward God? That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. This, he's speaking before this, he's speaking about the, uh, the vineyard, he's speaking about Israel here, the Jews. The Jews had rejected their Messiah. And so the gospel went unto us as Gentiles now. That God had this all in mind, it was planned in eternity past. That he would send his son Jesus Christ to die upon the cross. You see, the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. But is he your Saviour? You need to make him yours personally. You need to come to saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, at the moment of death, you'll be in hell, my friend. And God does not want you to go down to hell. He wants you to be in heaven. The only way we can be there is through the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work upon the cross of Calvary. And so we see here that uh, the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing and it is marvellous in our eyes. And they sought to lay hand on, on him. Sorry, they sought to lay hold on him. But feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. And they left him and went their way. And they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. And when they were come, they say unto him, Master, we know that thou art true, and carest for no man, for thou regardest not the person of men, but teacheth the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? In other words, is it right, should we be paying taxes to the government, in other words? Shall we give or shall we not give? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny, that I may see it. And they brought it, and he said unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Jesus uh, answered, answering, said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. Then come, uh, come to him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die and leave his wife behind him, and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were seven brethren, and the first took a wife, and dying left no seed. And the second took her, and died, neither left he any seed. And the third likewise, and the seven had her, and left no seed. Last of all, the woman died also. In the resurrection, therefore, when they shall rise, whose wife shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not bear them? Therefore her, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God. For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. And as touching the dead that they rise, have ye not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, 
And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe uh, said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbour as himself, is more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God, and no man after that durst ask him any question. In other words, no man after that dared to ask him any question. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? But David himself said by the Holy Spirit, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord, and whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. And he said unto them, In his doctrine, Beware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing, and love salutations in the market uh, places, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and the uppermost rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. And Jesus sat over against the treasury, and began, uh, beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, or truly I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. And so the basic issue this was this, it wasn't how much they put in, it was how much they had left in their hand basically. But we have to realise that we have nothing to give God. We cannot be in heaven by our own works. We've got to come God's way, and God's way is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God who was crucified upon the cross of Calvary. Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, which means your soul can be saved. And this is what God wants for each and every one of us, that our soul will be saved through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. His finished work upon the cross is all sufficient for all those who would call upon his name. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is essential. This is what you need to do. You need to realize that you cannot save yourself. None of us can. We're shut up to the salvation of the Lord. You see, salvation is of the Lord. We're ever going to be in heaven left to be the way God chooses to make it happen. And you and I must realize that the only way of salvation is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who left heaven's glory and came down here to this sin-cursed earth to live the perfect life upon earth that you and I could never ever live and then die the perfect death upon the cross of Calvary that once for all substitutionary death that he died on that cross he said no man taketh my life from me I lay it down to myself I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again this commandment have I received of my father and so we need to understand if we're ever going to be in heaven we have to come God's way and God's way is through the cross and the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ upon that cross the one who's risen from
from the dead the third day and become the first fruits of them that slept. Praise the Lord for the resurrection of Jesus Christ from among the dead the third day. He's a victor over sin, death, hell and the devil. Praise the Lord. There is a victor up in heaven. He desires to save your soul this afternoon. No need to go down to hell. God wants you to be in heaven. And the only way we can be in heaven is if we put our faith in Jesus Christ. We've got to come in repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before and forever and eternally too late. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening. Look at uh, Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13, and uh, as he went out of the temple, this is the Lord Jesus Christ, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest uh, thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew uh, asked him privately, "Tell us uh, when shall these things, uh, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled?" Jesus answering uh, them began to say, "Take heed, lest any man deceive you." For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. When ye shall hear of wars and rumours of wars, be ye uh, not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, that means different places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Now this here is actually speaking about the tribulation time. A seven year tribulation period that will come upon this earth. Terrible time of judgment. Especially the last three and a half years is called the great tribulation. And God does not want us to be left behind in any of those seven year that seven year tribulation period. He wants us to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. That's what the Christians, the believers, are actually waiting for now. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ down into the air to take us, those who have believed in on Christ, to take us to be forever with himself. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to the councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall uh, lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye uh, premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Spirit. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son. And children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now he's talking about physical salvation here. 
He's talking about the preservation of the body. It's not eternal salvation of what I'm preaching unto you now concerning that you need so urgently. You need salvation for your soul. Now this can only happen through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need forgiveness for our sins. And the only way that we can receive forgiveness is through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ which he shed for us abundantly and freely upon the cross of Calvary. That you and I could be brought back to that holy, sin-hating God. You and I, because of our sin, we cannot enter into heaven. We must understand that. There are no amount of good works that you and I can perform to impress God in any way, shape or form. We cannot enter heaven by good works. It's through faith in Jesus Christ alone. What we need to do is come to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe upon Him. Receive Him as our Saviour. Otherwise, He'll be our judge. Now, this is what we've got to understand. He'll either be our Saviour or He's going to be our judge. What will it be for you? God wants to save your soul tonight, right now. You see, now is the day of salvation. This is an urgent message, my friend. We must get right with God. We must be prepared to meet God. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. You see, God is angry with the wicked every day. That is, those who are not saved. If you're not a child of God, God is angry with you. Why? Because of your sins that have not been forgiven. But he's a loving, merciful, long-suffering God. And he wants to save your soul right now. If you come in repentance toward God, that is, a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's forever and eternally too late. But when you shall hear the, uh, shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, uh, let him that readeth understand, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein, to take anything out of his house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe, unto them, or but woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, for in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. Here is the beginning of the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. It's called the Great Tribulation. We've never known anything like that upon this earth. And except the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. In other words, no one, everyone would be wiped out of the face of the earth. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. And then, if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or Lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, that even the elect, that it's not possible to deceive the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days... After that tribulation, the sun, sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven now learn a parable of the fig tree 
When her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh or it's near, even at the doors. Verily or truly I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, take ye heed uh, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his word, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Now speaking here unto his disciples, and so you and I need to understand that we have a need of salvation. Our soul needs to be saved. If our soul is not saved, it will mean at the moment of death we'll be in hell. And God does not want you to go down to hell, my friend. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Your soul can be saved right this very moment. Tonight, you can get right with God by repentance toward God, as I've said, acknowledging your sinful condition before the Lord and then putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that was crucified upon the cross. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried, but praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. Is your soul saved? Are you on your way to heaven? Or are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? No need for that, my friend. You can get on the narrow road that leads to heaven by entering through the door. Now the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, I am the door. This is John 10, chapter 10, verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. You can be saved tonight, my friend, by putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Chris was asked a long time ago, what must I do to be saved? The simple answer was this, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. In whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. Have you received forgiveness for your sins? The only way is through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Son of the living God who knew no sin, did no sin and in him is no sin. You and I are sinners in the sight of the Lord when we're born in this world. We need forgiveness for those sins. The only way is through the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross and the precious blood that was shed that day on that cross. Don't forget, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He's a living, loving saviour. He desires to save your soul from a long lost eternity. Heaven or hell, what will it be for you? So determine what you by what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening.